face the facts. I am cold. I mean, I am Nick Face. It's nice to see you all once again. Um, in case you didn't know when we were taping this show, uh, the elements around this area are very, windy very, today. very difficult to get around with trees and everything down. So we want to uh, warm up here a little bit with spurring some sports knowledge at you yeah, some yeah. things. So get fired up with some rants. Uh. I want to talk with uh, Tom Smith is back here in our center. Uh, I like to call him center square, but I'm in the hot seat, seat the center oh, okay. seat, center of attention, as you you might oh, say. Jeez, let's mute him now, please. <laughs> and we have new kid on the block. Bruce McLaren, welcome, Bruce. Wait, Marky Mark's here? Yeah, new kid. He's in the parking lot. He's jamming up. He's not Bruce, a new kid. Bruce, welcome to Face the Facts. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, a little thing here on Bruce. Bruce just finished up a great class we just ran uh, through Sports Zone. Um, it's a sports management class that we do with making your own fantasy team, talking about sports, and now it's a chance for you to get yeah. to be on television. Yeah. How cool is that? It, it's so exciting. Now, we just did it a, we do a sports minute for uh, Sports Zone that you also get the chance to be a part of. So uh -huh. now it's a chance to be on real TV, real audience. So don't screw up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We can always edit and everything, anyways. But I want to talk first here about what's happening with our big four. We have some information and some things to talk about with the Patriots, the Celtics, the Red Sox. Maybe a little bit with that baseball, anyway, and um, the Bruins, of course. You can't forget the black can't and gold. Tom's got his black and gold here. Decked out. Want we'll to talk Patriots first? Last time we w were with you, uh, we had two games that were um, upcoming and all. We got a win against the uh, Giants. That was a big win, mm -hmm. and I believe the last time that we were here from that, it was a win against Buffalo. Was that correct? Yeah. Buffalo and then Giants. So yeah. right now the Patriots are 6-0. and They are undefeated. And the only other undefeated team is Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco which, 49ers. You know, and which, it's you know, shocking. I can't believe You think it. that's shocking? I, I do too. I'm not surprised. I think everybody knew that Jimmy G would do great things. See, I'm, I'm surprised. Are you surprised? I'm really surprised. I would really love to see Brady versus uh, Jimmy G in the Super Bowl. That Who gets the amazing. upper hand in that? <laughs> I'm Brady, but Brady. I mean, San Fran has a really good defense this year. Yeah. They they added a lot of key components to their team, and I mean, if you look at their running back core, they, Tevin Coleman's always been, uh, you know, he kind of with under Atlanta the radar from yeah. before, right? He was yeah. yeah, he was under okay. with Atlanta. He's always been the guy that's been under the radar, kind of because you know, when in, in Atlanta, it's really all attention goes to Julio Jones. And, or uh, who was uh, the other running back? Freeman. Devontae Freeman, that is correct. So he was kind of under the radar. He's always been a good running back. Though. I thought, I didn't think San Francisco was going to do much this year. And the reason why is Garoppolo got hurt last year. I think he had to lot to, uh, a lot to prove. Uh, yeah, I thought it would be a re rebuilding year for I did San too. Francisco. I did too. I thought Jimmy Garoppolo was going to have to prove himself a little bit more because really, honestly, before he had gotten hurt and all, he played like a total of eight games. That's it. It was a very small sample size. So the future looked bright for him when he went with San Francisco and all, but we needed to see a little bit more of it. I'm going to tell you right now, I still need to see a little bit more well, to see if he can get to a Super Bowl and I, stay you know, consistent like he has. I'm, I'm not really too surprised at how well they've succeeded so far this season. Um, like I said, the defense has been really good, and that's um, more, more of where the points came from for them and the running game. Um, we saw a little bit of passing from him at the start of the season. Haven't seen so much of that mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, but that I think the passing game came in because Coleman was hurt at the start of the season, so they didn't really have much of a running game to Could go be. on. Um, but he has a good, he has a decent wide receiver core. Um, I just don't think he's gotten to that level of. Do where they he have can. enough talent to get to the playoffs? Yes. You do think they do? Okay. Yeah. That I mean, would be, it would be nice to see it. I mean, you look at you're looking at the NFL NFL right now, and you're looking at all these teams, and you're really looking at uh, who who's actually who's actually going to be really good this year in the playoffs. Bruce, who do you think is a top team in the NFL right now? I keep asking myself well, the question right now, and I don't even know the answer sometimes. Well, the Patriots, I think. Okay, that's good. And I also think that the, I think the when Drew Brees gets back, the Saints will be very good. Okay, the Saints are another good team. Here's the biggest question that I have to ask you guys. Is Kansas City, what's going on with that? I, how did they lose to the Colts? Well, I mean, the Texans, yeah. How can it you was, ask they that? They lost to the when, Texans and they you, lost to, um, who was the other team the they other lost Colts, to? Right? 
The Colts. The Colts and the Texans. But how can you ask that when Dallas loses to the Jets and Dallas had big things coming up this year? That was embarrassing. (laughs) I watched that game on Sunday and the Jets lose. The Jets winning against Dallas. That that was that was pretty bad. I mean, when when that happens, you just got to be like, all right, I'm throwing in the towel. Can't can't accept that fact. But isn't that that's how Dallas has been? And yeah, I was was I su- was I surprised a little bit, yeah. but you know, four games into the season, Dallas starts. You know what was interesting too on that broadcast? Tony Romo broadcast that game, and I think I saw him crying after the game. I think I did. You're gonna have to roll the tape back, but I think you think Could we have. were seeing some Could tears have. shed. Could have, yeah. What were you gonna say too? Um, well, because at the beginning of the year they were three and zero because they played the arguably like the three worst teams. They yep. played the Dolphins, the Redskins, and the Giants. They're horrible. Uh, so, are the Jets. So, so are the Jets. <laughs> there so aren't the really Jets. that many good teams right now. Uh, no. And here's the thing. The Patriots are 6-0, and but should they be? No. No. You don't think so? No. You don't think so? No. They've had an easy schedule. I, I'm, I'm a little wishy-washy on it myself. Their schedule is cupcake I think much. I think there's something going on off the field uh, with Brady, whether it's, you know, something mentally – um, I mean, I know we talked a little about it a couple weeks ago. You had texted me during the game from that, and um, I didn't get a chance to watch it at the time. Do you think there's something going on with Tom Brady? I do. I, I don't think he's... Is it injury? Is in it mental focus. focus? What do you think? Yeah, I don't think he's mentally 100% prepared, prepared okay. and focused for all I games. mean... Is that what you, is that what you see? I, I think it, I think it could be something mentally because you had the wide receiver core there the first game. And I know we're probably going to talk about this in a few minutes, but then you add, you throw in the extra bonus of having Antonio Brown, and then you get the, you know, you get that removed again, and you come into the third week, and now you don't know who you, you don't really have much of a game plan to go on because it's only been a week, and yeah, I mean it's Brady and it's Belichick, and you know they should really have a game plan. But when you have that happen so quickly, and I think such, the game plan's changed a lot this year. Uh, yeah, because I think they're much better with AB with that extra hit. There, there's another one that should be on but, the talking board for us to talk about right now. Yeah, they shouldn't get Given him. Antonio Brown's status and everything that's going on right here, Antonio Brown has come out and said that he would like another chance, and if the Patriots are going to pay him anyway, wouldn't it make sense for him to just come back and play? Would you take Antonio Brown right now? No. Okay, would you? No, he had his chance. He had his chance. <laughs> he had his it? chance. Okay. I mean, he, he basically blew his chance – uh, when he left Pittsburgh and went into Oakland and had that whole ridiculous situation with the helmet. And then he, he gets signed by the Patriots. And You can't take away the talent. He has the talent. No, but he, he absolutely has the talent. He's another one who's upstairs in this thing right here. It's just it's, mental. He, he doesn't have the switch flicked on properly. Well, and, um, and you know, they've been talking about, oh, are the Patriots going to make a move for – OBJ, are they going to make a move for AJ Green now? Is on is in rumors. Are they going to make a move for the other big name? Was why am I drawing a blank on it? I've heard Danny Amendola's name thrown out there. Oh, right. I haven't heard that one yet. Um, but we, I mean, oh, we, I know Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders okay. on that's the move that I would make right now. If you had something to give up for that, I, I would take Emmanuel Sanders. Well, we I, we talked we talked back in April about you know who would we rather want when the the trade the. Trade rumors started circul or signing whatever rumors started circulating uh, about OBJ and Antonio Brown. We talked about who would we rather out of those two, and we had a long, long discussion. You, me, and Phil had a very long discussion. I remember about, that show. And I mean that conversation lasted probably I Brown, close to I? ten minutes. Uh, you picked Brown. I picked Brown. I think. I think Phil went with OBJ. And that's why he was kicked off this program here today. It's because of that choice. So he gets to sit in the back and and, and pout. So, no, I'm only kidding. Um, But, I mean, I... I, I bet now they're regretting, you know, releasing Demarius Thomas and losing out on getting Well, Bill Belichick had something to say about that today. He actually regretted releasing him and having him go to the – or trade – was it a trade? No, he released – they released him. They cut him from the team because Because they needed to make a spot. He would be somebody that – Patriots would like right now because they we don't have them. much depth at, at wide receiver right we now. We don't have much depth at uh, a couple offensive positions, really. Is there any other players that we haven't mentioned here, Bruce, that you think could fit into the Patriots system well? Whether it's a wide receiver, maybe it's a tight end, maybe it's a, a, an offensive lineman, <laughs> something. I, I, I think they could really um, 
Well, at, at least they got um, they got their tight end back. Ben they, Watson they, they coming ben back Watson. was a very big move. It's huge. Cause Do you want me to tell you why I think he came back? Yeah, why? It leads to a little what bit of think? something else. Do you have any idea why? Why do you think he came back? I There's a couple things to the story. I, I think he really came back because he was, I don't know, he was probably really annoyed that he didn't get to play for well, a while. Well, do you think it was a need for the Patriots for a tight end? They did, and, yeah. and, they, and he wanted to play. So Injuries had something to, to do back. with it. That was one thing. We had a couple players on IR But, I mean, now, you get cut by a team a couple times. Like You know, there has to be tough. a really good reason for you to want to come back. But the other reason is I think this is going to be the big one, and that's that Gronk is not going to come back now at the end at this part in the season. He wants a full year off to see how things work. And I think the Patriots were leaving the door open for a possible Gronk return at some point. Now that we know that Gronk has fully come out and said that he needs at least a year to recover and see where his mind is from stuff, I think the Patriots went back to Ben Watson and said, okay, we have a need. We really think that you could be a, a force here with us. And he's played in the Patriots system and before. And he knows the system. He has. I think that's what they did. Yes, I would love a Gronk back. But if Gronk's not fully ready to come back, why waste that roster spot? He, he, I mean, you need, you need a body that can block. And Ben Watson has that body. It's not Gronk like. No, it's not Gronk like, it, but it, it, it's, it's bigger it's than helpful. it's bigger than Lacoste and Izzo. I don't think Izzo They're and Lacoste. I don't think Izzo yeah. or Lacoste are have a big enough body to be able to block. I don't either. That's been a big problem with the Patriots right now is the offensive line and the blocking. The other issue that they have to deal with is now our second fullback is now on the IR as well. They're, they're using up all their IR So slots. the first, per, you, you're allowed to return two players who are on injured reserve back to your roster at some point in the season. Nikhil Harry is already practicing right now with the Patriots. He was one of them that was put on that list. Yeah. I think that's likely that he's coming back. I would, you, you would Isaiah say. Wynn, yeah. they're saying, is most likely coming back too. Well, he's a big need. The question here is do you rather win or do you rather James Devlin? James Devlin, in my opinion. I, I, I rather Devlin and they because need, they, they don't have him. the fullback blocker. I feel the reason why the run game has been so shady has been that they don't have him there to help Sonny Michelle or Rex Burkhead or whoever or James White, whoever has the ball, to block well so you can get a good but run you, return. But you could make an argument, a very good argument for Isaiah Wynn, too. The problem I have with Wynn is he has not shown that he can stay healthy. Who's to say that he comes back that first game and, oh, my God, a hangnail. I'm, I'm done. Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, my, my hand hurts. I can't play anymore. My foot hurts. He has a history now of not being uh, super reliable. That's what I've seen, at least. So, yes, I'd like to see two of this whatever list of IRs come off. But who knows? I mean, they have too many players on the IR. The right trade now deadline, choose. I think, is in a couple weeks. Week eight, is it? November, it's mid November. Yeah. Late November, yeah. or something like early, that. Early mid November. So we'll have to see what does happen from that. But the Patriots have a long list of shopping cart items that they need to <laughs> they, get they, to yeah, be they better prepared. I was thinking Tyler Boyd would be a good add-on. That's not a bad receiver. move. That he's a Bengal, right? He is. I, okay. I think he's pretty good. And I've also heard other names with, you know, you said A.J. Green. I've also heard uh, Tyler Eifert's name as a tight end. That's name's been floated the Bengals, out there. The Bengals have a lot of big, big pieces that they could move and get a lot of stuff in return. The Bengals have shown, though, that they don't like to trade. They, they, they like to hang on to whoever it is. But they're the type, of team, right, they're the yep. type of team right they now do. that isn't doing well enough where they could go into a rebuild er era. Would you really want get, an A.J. Green, though? He, he hasn't played in a year. No, he doesn't even play. He got hurt last year. He gets hurt again. Who, who's to say he's ready to go? That's the thing. But you, you need something. No. What did you guys think about when I mentioned Danny Amendola's name? I, I don't know. I don't think. I think he's kind of done. I think he's done. I think he's too old. I think he's done. Yeah, he's he's thirty five right now. He's getting up there. I mean, where where you know you kind of you don't really don't really need him. <laughs> I mean, what 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 is he going to play? He can't play the slot. Edelman's already in the slot as a slot receiver. Well, they made it work with Edelman and Amendola for many years. Uh, yeah, but you, you, Dola, you need, I mean, come on. I know, but you yeah. need more. You need more deep threat right now. You don't need two slot receivers. 
I personally think if Amendola is back into the fold, I think it frees up another man, and that might with help Josh with Gordon. your big man with Josh Gordon downfield. Because right now, I think the double team or coverage on Gordon, he, he, he can't he, do he's, it. He's not conditioned right, right, right. You know, 100% right now because he hasn't played. Well, I mean, you look, you look he at the replays. To to speed you look at bit. the replays, and you can tell he doesn't really know what to do. He needs the oxygen mask. <laughs> So that's, what we're, that's how our outlook is right now here on the Patriots. We don't mean to be the doom and gloom negative Nancys here that we no, want to be. But, I mean, th this is where we're at. We're 6-0. We're 6-0. They haven't and played the way that and they, we expect them to yeah, play. We're 6-0 and we played we're crummy teams. We're spoiled, teams. rotten New England Patriots fans, and we expect the best, and we demand the best. <laughs> we so demand that's, it. So that's, that's just how demand, it is. Demand, we need demand. it now. On a positive no. note, I will say from the Giants game, the biggest takeaway for me was, of course, again, our defense. Okay? Oh. Yes, they let up 14 points. But they had some pretty exceptional plays really, from really, the start really, of it. Really, really, really good. One of the takeaways was Chase Winovich. Okay, he had, was it a tip and he ran it in? Somebody, somebody, somebody helped. blocked. No, the, the punter kicked it into punter his own kicked teammate. It. That's what it was. Back Chase and Winovich, Winovich got picked the first. It up. Well, that was. I trust, here's another crazy thing. And again, we're kind of jumping back again, but I trust the defense right now more to score than I trust the offense to score. Isn't what? that kind of crazy? But that's what that's the way the right? season's been working for every happens. team. But that's how the season's been working for every team, really. Who right now would you say is the MVP on the defensive front for the Patriots? It's a tough question. Um, you know what? I'm gonna we go talked with... about this in the sports minute, we didn't did. we? We did. And I, Do you remember who your choice was? I, I picked Stephon Gilmore, and I still believe and that he, had a heck he of a game. is. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to say Jamie Collins. That's really? a, I, I think I said that name. You did. I think I did. I'm going to have to say right now the biggest difference maker right now is Jamie Collins. I do. That move that the Patriots brought back as a motivated player, that made all the difference in the world. Because you had Van Noy's production last year. You had Gilmore's. You had... Uh, Devin McCourty, yeah. but I think you because didn't have, of your you're adding miss, in you're so missing many other high, pieces. You were missing Hightower for a good chunk of the season. You didn't really have a good Hightower's linebacker. Hightower's had a great, great, great been good. I, I think mean, he would have been my second MVP. Dante Hightower has been amazing. Yep. He's been playing so but, ja but Jamie Collins knows how to make those key plays when they need them. Your biggest strength that the Patriots do have is so much depth at positions on the defensive side of the ball. It's just incredible how, you know, if Dante Hightower needs a couple snaps off, oh, don't worry, we'll throw in the other linebacker. Or if, uh, you know, Devin McCourty, I know he didn't play, I don't think, against the Giants. I think he played, sort of played, I think he played like the That's first fine. quarter or something. I mean, you yeah. got Deron Harmon there. You yeah. got, um, you got uh, Josh Jackson. Uh, Jackson, J.C. Jackson out there getting the job done. So all those things are great. Looking ahead now, the Patriots have another one of those, uh, those odd – games where you have a they Monday night game. They haven't even had a challenge yet this year. Against the uh, the Jets. The Jets. <laughs> <laughs> Who are coming off of a big win against oh, yeah. Dallas. Win that super, they got their Momentum. Super Bowl win right there. <laughs> What's the outlook here on the Jets? Well, no. <laughs> That's, uh, sorry, Jets. Just sorry. don't even show up. You're done. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, you know, I, I've said blowout like the last two games. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, you know, the Jets are going to play them tight a little bit and then the, the Patriots are going to come in the second half and, you know, 27-10, my final score. Uh, I think 34 to You're going big 13, numbers. 30, okay, I like that. 34 12. I like I like the 27-10. I'm going to go like 28-14 maybe. 28-14? Yeah. We'll have to see how that comes about. Right. I, I I'm looking that. at the rest of the NFL. We've talked about some of the other teams there. Are, is there any other, any other noteworthy um, – Discussion that needs to be had about any of the other teams. Well, I think uh, Jalen Ramsey getting traded from the Jaguars. That's, that's, that's the big, big. one. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what big. I was. That's, that's what was on the tip of my tongue, and you took it away from me. What I, I like about this is that he went to the Rams, and he didn't go to the Eagles, or he didn't go to the Cowboys. How foolish do those two organizations look without getting him? I'm, I mean, because any, the Rams, any, right? Now, I don't uh, think the Rams are that good right now. They any, are. Any they lost the Forty Nine. They yep. lost the 49ers. I mean, I, mean, I don't know why I, I don't know why you would put the Rams on your trade list. <laughs> well, <I> mean, <laughs> at least this season. I, 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 I well, I don't know why you would put any team this season on your trade list, other than you know, like the Patriots. Patriots. Yeah. I think Matt Breda has been... Bizarro land in the NFL continues. You know, if we hear any other things that happen throughout the week, it's we'll let circus. you know in our next it's episode of the circus time here on Face the Facts. So <laughs> we want to jump to our next topic of conversation, and that's the black and gold. 
They deserve the, the to be hot, talked about. The hot black and gold. What is more surprising to you right now? The Patriots 6-0 and start or the Bruins 5-1 and start to start this season? I'm, I'm going to have to go with the Bruins I'm start this season. I'm going with that, too. I agree. 5-1. and one. They had a very tough West Coast trip to start the season, and you came back. Should have been perfect. Should have been perfect. 3-1. and one. That's great. But I'll take it. I'd rather, I'd rather have the loss on the road trip and then come back home and take a loss at home. What has looked the best for the Bruins right now? Um, There's a lot of things to talk about with it, but what do you see from afar that stands out to you the most? Uh, I like I like the defensive end of the the defensive aspect of the game right now. How That's, it hasn't how it hasn't yeah. changed since the playoffs. Okay, I, it, I've seen that. Yep. It looks like they haven't even lost a single beat since you know losing the cup. So you, have you noticed anything? I've loved how they're switching off key, um, Rask. And, um, well, so they did that. Like the they did that a little, I, I love well, the goaltending. They've been playing so. That's well. my biggest. Well, when surprise I when I right when now. I was saying so you and I agree on when that. I say defensive aspect, I mean like the defense and the goaltending put you together. Mean, okay. I think Halak so. could potentially outplay Rask as the season goes on this year. That's my bold prediction right now. That's that's very bold. <laughs> <laughs> that's very bold. That's, that's I think, too bold. And I'm I, saying that because you're going to see Halak play a little bit more than Rass did from last season. And the reason why is they want to keep Tuca as rested as possible when it gets to the big stage. They did a great job of that last year. Well, So you may see the amount of games that Halak plays in the regular season up a little bit uh, more. But don't be surprised if at some point... Halak gets on one of those streaks, like he can, like he's on right now, I would say, and ends up maybe outproducing Rask at the big moment or the but, big stage. I mean, and you're going to have a tough decision to make on who's going to start. But let me remind you that last year, <laughs> last year, Tuco went through that cold streak for about a month, maybe a little less than a month, and Halak came in, took over the reins, got on a hot streak, then started getting cold again, and then Rask came in, and then they started switching off every other game. And I think Halak got cold as the at, at, as towards the end of the season. Am I correct on that? And then Rask yeah. basically picked up production as the playoffs were about right. to begin. And that's why I love that they decided to sign uh, Halak in the off season before last season. And basically, you have you got two starting goalies. I agree on that. And that that was probably one of the smartest moves Don Sweeney will ever make. But I think you can trust Rask. You can trust either you goaltender, can. and that's that's what makes this tandem so dangerous. You, are you in agreement that from the Stanley Cup from last year that Rask wasn't the person to blame for them losing? Oh, yeah. 100%. Okay. I think we all – I just wanted to make sure that we set the record straight here because Rask does get a lot of criticism he for, does. for he, he gets his production much. stuff. I know he's never really won a Stanley Cup because Rask – I mean, Rask was back up to right. St. Thomas back in the day. Right. But – there is room for improvement, don't get me wrong, but Tuca is one of the best goaltenders in the NHL. If no are you, are you question like, about are it. You really? uh, uh, yeah. No question asked there. But listen, the, the first line is starting to serve up pasta again, so it's all good. Four goals from <laughs> David Poshnik on the matinee game against the Ducks on Monday afternoon. Wow. and Columbus Day. I like what I see there. However, is it concerning that you're getting all this production once again from your first line, and the second and the third have been pretty invisible. Um, no, because you're getting production from your fourth line, too. Well, I, I didn't mention the fourth, because that's your Corrali line, which we all loved you know, from the playoffs well, and everything I mean, there. They're looking like the I want more production from DeBrusque. I uh, want more production from Krejci. I want more production from... Um, what's his name? Uh, Heinen. That's the, right there. I like the addition of Brett Ritchie a lot. There's your big enforcer type that they've been missing. For they the were past missing. Couple that means that Backus really can head up to the ninth floor and not really play. Uh, I mean, I don't mind that. He, he. I mean, when he's when he's played this you season, you need if you're gonna win a cup. We've seen this time and time again. Production on the first line is wonderful and. Perfect and everything. We call it the perfection line. That's what they like to call it. I need DeBrus to step it up. I need Krejci to stop having his hangnails and get on the ice and play. 
That's what I want to see as a fan. Am I being too critical? I wouldn't say you're being too critical, but um, before I you know, state my opinion, I'm going to say that the games that Baggins has played in the season, he's been a complete ghost. Yes. And I'm totally okay with that because I haven't liked Baggins since early last season because he didn't really produce. That being said, I feel like the second line is there to set up scoring chances for either the fourth line or the third line or the first line, depending on whatever line Bruce Cassidy decides to, you know, throw in there afterwards. I, I feel like they're there to set up the chances and end up somewhat producing in a How way. How important do you think secondary scoring is? Really, really, really important. When Another they, name that we haven't mentioned that should be discussed, too, is um, I think one of the better players on the ice right now, and I'm sorry we didn't mention his name, is Charlie Coyle. Oh, wow. He's been playing I so, think, so, so, so. He's not so, putting the puck so, in the net, so, but I think his but that's way what he, was, he impacts the game. But that's what he was doing last year, too. Is important. Yeah, he was, I'm he a was. big fan of that. I remember first when that move was announced, yeah, and I was said, like, we both oh, well, you were shaky, I, I, but I, I said was, I loved it. I don't know if I like Ryan Donato uh, leaving because. But you know what? Yeah. Coyle is a spark, and I want to see more from him because I do think that he has the potential to be a 20-goal scorer. I do think he does. He just needs that other person to be there. And that's where I think Krejci, I, I still don't know how he is kind of still a part of the team in a way. I think I think he could be moved down to the third line at this point. When you, I do after too. You, after you bring in Charlie Coyle, you kind of have your second line center there now. Coyle, DeBrusque, and Heinen. Do you like that? I mean, it sounds like magic to my ears. Well, that would be nice to see it. And the third line is just a mix match of a different, a lot of different. Things. Yeah, throw Krejci on with you know whoever. He'd see Krejci. Krejci is the kind of player that kind of seems like he can be thrown in on a line with anybody and mm -hmm. still make some kind of play. Yeah. Whether it whether it turns into a goal or not, he can oh he he's the kind of guy that can move the puck really well and he can pass it to whoever whoever's on the ice with him. So I mean, I think Co moving Coil up to the second line would be great, especially um, especially since Coil is younger and you're starting you know you're starting to kind of see Bergeron and Marshawn and Char start to decline. I haven't even mentioned them, but I think they've been. They've been steady. They've been steady, They're but fine. you know, you, yeah. you can tell that there's. I mean, you, during the playoffs, they were, you know, they were exhausted. It's it's the same thing that we said. Like I said with Tuca, is you want to see maybe a little bit more of a minutes restriction on some of the guys, so they have plenty left in the tank when push comes to shove. Right. Yeah. Um, just a little bit of an outlook here for the Bruins. Uh, uh, looking ahead, they have the Tampa Lightning coming up oh, yeah. very shortly this week, and they also have, looking ahead on the weekend, have the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yep. They're all coming to town, too. Yep. Correct? They're yeah. not going to Toronto. No, they're all uh, no, no, they're going, they're to, going Toronto, to Toronto, okay. and then Toronto, they be they come back to Boston and play Toronto. So you got some, you got some, uh, you got some meat right there. So it'll be good to see them continue to. Well, I wouldn't say it's have? meat because Tampa, Tampa hasn't look so been good. playing well lately. And good. Stamkos good. is not Stick very happy. Stick him right in the mouth. Stampo, yeah. Stamkos is not very happy about that. I will say this. Stamp, uh, the Lightning are second to last place in the Atlantic Division right above um, Ottawa. Love it. <laughs> Let's keep so, it that way. And, and Toronto is, I think, fifth below Montreal and Detroit. So uh, Boston sitting pretty right there, number two, right, uh, right underneath Buffalo, who will probably shortly. Oh, they'll, they'll tank a pot of soon. Yeah. So <laughs> they'll tank a pot of miss um, right down there. I'm not worried. Uh, you know, it's looking pretty good right now. It's looking bright. Well, you know what's also yeah. looking pretty bright? That Houston Astros have a lead on the Yankees right now yeah. in the best of seven series here. They and are then, leading two games to one against the Yankees to figure out who's going to the World Series. Are they gonna? Have, Pretty big game coming up, which would be game number four. Yeah. And if um, if Houston gets that win, they'll be one step ahead to get into the series against the Nationals. The Nationals. Wow! Win. So first much time to say. in history going to the Nationals. So, what do you think so far? Wow! Wow! I cannot. Wow? Okay. I cannot believe that the Nationals swept. I can't believe it. They had a lot of fight in them, a lot of hunger, and a lot of proof. They, and you know what's really. They really wanted it. Well, they really wanted it, but the thing that I find the most humbling and most funny out of the whole thing 
Where's Bryce Hopper again? Where's <laughs> Billy. Bryce Ho- where is Bryce Hopper? <laughs> where? Where is he? Uh, he's doing one of these. Screwing another team. <laughs> he's flicking up his money up in the air. But anyway, um, I think it's pretty cool how we see a team that hasn't got to a World Series in their history. Oh, DC was Get hungry there. for another uh, another championship. I mean, two championships in three years. Yeah, for what? the Capitals. Yeah, That's right. Looking pretty good. Do you think the Astros will prevail in this series against the Yankees, or is it going to be the Yankees? No, I don't think they'll prevail. I think okay. the Yankees eventually. I hate to say it, yeah. but I think the Yankees eventually will win in game six. I mean, I prefer neither so team. So you think it's going to be series, Yankees but... and the Nationals? Uh-huh. Okay, so then we that's going to mean it's probably going to go seven games. Good. Yeah. I'm going to go with the Astros. I'm going with that. I don't think the Astros are going to win. I am going with the Nationals the entire way. I'm going with the Nationals. I wanted Milwaukee. I think that's who you wanted. I wanted. I want. No, I actually wanted the. I. I, want the I wanted the Nationals, and I wanted. Uh, I wanted Tampa from the American League. Okay. Um. I. You know. I'm not a huge fan of Houston. Um. Yeah. Been but, there, done that. I don't want to see him win again. Yeah, don't need don't need to see them win again. No. It was it was nice for Cora to win it for them to win it when Cora was there. And but now, uh, I'm you know not a big Justin Verlander fan. Uh, and obviously, uh, you know, don't, I, tell I, Kate, I, don't tell Kate Upton that. She'll be all <laughs> over you. Uh, we don't need any more Twitter yeah, wars on that. Bla- on got this blocked on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, obviously, I don't want to see the Yankees there. No, but, neither uh, do I. No. But I mean. Um, so obviously, either way, I'm going to say I want the, you know I I think the Nationals are going to win. I think it's really going to come down to pitching in uh, the American League series and in the World Series. Um, but Who's I, pitching staff's better? I think Astros have the better pitching staff. I don't okay. think the Yankees have had a good pitching staff in two or three years. I don't either. Yankees were going to go with there was a rain out the other night, and the Yankees were going to end up going with a bullpen game, and we saw Tampa do that a lot during the regular season from stuff, but. I got to tell you, I don't like that model at all. No. Having, a, having a bullpen pitcher it, it pitch an inning down, and then go to the next. It slows down the game it's so awful. much more. I think that should it's... be banned. You need a starting pitcher that can go five, six, seven. The days of a seven inning or eight inning pitcher now oh, are it's, just it's it's so been, rare. Been gone Except for like the Nationals pitching against the Cardinals. See, if, it gets to Hughes, if it gets to be the Astros and the Nationals in the World Series, you have a potential to have for a game one a Justin Verlander versus a Max, Max Scherzer. Scherzer. That's game two, so good. you could have Garrett Cole versus a Steven Strasburg. Strasburg yeah. Game three, Patrick Corbin versus Zach Grinke. Game four could be Stats. Anibal Sanchez, who had a great game against um, uh, game one, didn't he, against the Yankees when he pretty much shut them yeah. out? Versus um, who? Um, who's the other guy for the net? Whatever other guy out there, Joe Schmo. I don't. Well, care. the the crazy the crazy thing about the Cardinals National Series is, you know, the Cardinals are so streaky with their hitting that that I, that I think that's the reason why the they Cardinals didn't win. deserve to be there. They they didn't deserve to be there, but they they did have a pitching staff that could you know take them through the playoffs. They just I like they're, clarity. They're just so streaky with their hitting that they couldn't get it done, and the Nationals can hit the ball. I was say? I was going with the Braves all the way yep. until. Sweep it under the rug. <laughs> the problem with the Braves is the Braves the are always is, a great regular season team. They the Braves always, and the Dodgers always, have those always, problems. Always. They're great regular season teams, but when they get to the big they, stage, they cannot they're like do a cookie. It. When the cookie crumbles. Well, it's like they're like the, with they're the cookie like, crumbles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're like San Jose Sharks yep. in the they NHL. Crumble. It's I mean, the Penguins lately, they're like the Penguins. Yep. Um, I mean, the, you, you could compare so many teams from different leagues that, you know, just do the same thing in playoffs. Regular and season you know it's a is regular. a whole lot different than your postseason. Moral of the story there. I mean, yeah. the at, last thing I do want to mention before we do wrap up our show, which has been a really jam-packed edition. Really jam-packed, and we got a lot in. Is the Celtics are coming up uh, next week for their start of their regular season. It will start on October 23rd. It will be against the Philadelphia 76ers, which I hope um, – Nope. Al Horford trips and falls on the floor. No, I'm only kidding. But anyway, maybe I'm not. The question I have to ask <laughs> you is, I guess there's a rumor going on right now that the Celtics are trying to extend Jalen Brown to a four-year, 80 to $100 million contract on the team. And my question here to you both is, is it justified? Is it worth it? Would you do it? Uh, I'm going to divert my answer to whatever Phil thinks. Okay. 
Um, because I, I, I don't really know. phone a friend in the know. back. <laughs> a friend. Yeah. Thumbs up or thumbs down, Phil? What do you think? You think oh, it's a good idea? Oh, he likes it. Okay. Right, he likes it. That'll be coming out of Phil Haley's paycheck. No. <laughs> <laughs> but what I, do you think? No, but well, you don't I'd, think it's worth it. I don't for a hundred million. I think I'd do a hundred million five years. That's what I do. So you give him a, eight, eight, about, 80, so about twenty, 20 million, million a year, or I might do eighty-five. Okay. Yeah. I I disagree with it myself too. Um, I don't think that he deserves it. I think there was a lot of not good enough. Uh, there was a lot of cockiness. There was a lot of oh look it, we got all the way to and almost beat LeBron, and I'm just so wonderful. <laughs> No. Yeah, he hasn't. No, you're I mean, not. You didn't beat LeBron. Seen, Show me really a championship to give us to give us a sense of okay, you can get the ball, you can be trusted. Even last year, I know there were problems with you know uh, Kyrie and uh, some of the chemistry with the team and all, and Jalen Brown wasn't um, really keen about coming off the bench from stuff. But I, I need to see more before that big money's dished out right there. I gotta say, because that money could be used for who knows, maybe another free agent down the line that's like a Kemba that um, could help the team out in a, long, a lot of ways. Yeah, so. I mean, I don't really watch basketball, but from what I saw last year and the year before, he hasn't really proved himself to be worth that amount of money. No, I, I completely agree. What do you um, think? You, you're not as big of a basketball fan, are you? I, I oh, you am. You like basketball, I, I, okay. I'm not as big as a hockey. I'm gotcha. basketball. But so we got, so Phil, we we got Phil Jr. On, here. Yeah, we got <laughs> diversity here on the program. It's good. So what seed do you think the – if they will make the playoffs, the Celtics will get. Maybe a five or six? Am I too low? What do you think? I, I don't know. I, what do you <laughs> Do they even make the playoffs? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I think they'll I, get a three or four. Three or four? Right in the middle. So if you're a four seed, you play a five. If you're a three, you play a six. If it's you're a, a two, you play a seven. If you're a one, you play an eight. And blah, 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 blah. Three I, and six is a big difference between four and five. That is a big difference. I agree. I mean, have they have – they, I mean – Get, losing Horford kind of leaves kind of a big void. That's why I mentioned the whole thing with the 76ers at right. the beginning. Like, I, I hope he slips in a banana peel on the garden floor. I know. Yeah. I know, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to leave a big void because he was a big reason why they did so well in the playoffs. And I also think that his leadership is going to be missed there. But I will say that with Kemba being there, I think he takes that role on. He, he's a good leader. He is a good leader. He, Gordon that. Hayward. What do you think about Gordon Hayward this year? He absolutely cannot get hurt again. I he hope needs not. To be, he needs to average at least 10 points a game. 10 to, 10 to 14 points a game is what I'm looking for. Is he him. a starter? No. You put him on the bench? Okay. Not right now. Not right now. Okay, we got a young Brad, uh, well, Brad Stevens he, in the house he right did, there. He did pretty well coming off the bench last season. He did. I think the key for him is consistency. He needs, yeah, he does need to be consistent. It's been a full year now since the whole thing with his leg. Now it's time for hopefully him to return to how, how he used to be with uh, the Utah Jazz. We'd like to see that. Hopefully he can take his game back to that level. We'll see. All see. Right. Any other final points, gentlemen, before we wrap up another lovely episode of Face the Facts? Well, just shout out to the Nationals. Good shout job. Shout out to the Nationals. Good job. Shout out to Bryce Hopper. Oh, never mind. You're oh. not a part of that team. Uh, Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> we hope you all have a great week. We will see you next time to break down some of the Patriots game, more about the Bruins, start of the Celtics season, which will be cool, and we should know who is going to the World, World Series. Series between the Astros and the Yankees. So, for Nick Face. Tom. Bruce. We will see you next time here in another episode of Face to Facts. We'll see you next time. Adios. Adios.